make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear Hello, uh, thank you very much for coming today. My name is Arthur Bergeron, for people who haven't met me. I'm an attorney, I practice in Marlboro, Mass. And welcome to the January installment of the Hudson Council on Aging Legal Clinic. Uh, you all remember me as just Arthur Bergeron. I am now Arthur Bergeron from uh, Myrick O'Connell. Uh, Myrick O'Connell is a firm that has offices in Westboro and Worcester. I have gone from having no partners to having 57 associates. This is a major transition for me. Um, I still have my office in Marlboro, but I now also have offices in Westboro and Worcester. One of the reasons why I did this uh, was because, as you folks know, I spent a lot of time working on elder law issues, and I wanted to make sure, because that piece of the practice has really grown, that I was able to continue to deal with other issues while at the same time focusing on elder law. And suddenly at Myrick O'Connell, I have all of these wonderful associates and partners who, who know this stuff, who really know this stuff. Um, so that, for example, I have always done some estate tax work, but not a lot, because estate tax work is always focused on people with total assets between uh, or over a million dollars. Um, that affects some folks, but certainly not all of you. But now, whenever those kinds of questions arise, I can ask my friend Janet Moore. Can you wave, Janet? Uh, Janet is an attorney at Myrick O'Connell who has been there for years and years, and this is all she does. She lives and breathes uh, estate taxes. And as a matter of fact, I'll be inviting her here uh, in February to talk about the federal, the disappearing federal estate tax law. Um, which apparently, is it still gone? It's still not in existence right now. There is no federal estate tax, much to my astonishment. I know I, in an earlier presentation last year, I had predicted there was no way that the estate tax was actually going to expire. Well, it did, so much for that. Um, and so she's going to explain kind of where all of that is uh, and, and, and what to expect, because we don't think it's going to, any tax is going to stay expired for very long, right? So. And then I've got, a, there's another wonderful person there who does fights, what we'll call family feuds for want of a better term. She does probate litigation involving families for, who are fighting. And so hopefully the following, for the next presentation in March, for the presentation in March, uh, we may do a presentation just called Family Feuds, which we'll, where we'll have her come in and talk about actual cases where families have fought over assets and over guardianship and over a bunch of things so you can get a sense of real life fights and then we'll talk about how you as folks who don't want to have fights in your family and who god forbid don't want your death to cause a fight can try to plan around that so that you can make sure that you can avoid being on a family feud show in some future year. So anyway, um, that's me still and today we're going to talk about I think a, an issue We've talked about you know, a number of issues dealing with planning and mass and nursing homes and other things, but for a lot of you, one of the real basic issues that you deal with is this question of keeping control of how, as you get older, um, you can make sure that, first of all, you are in as much control as possible of your lives, of your decisions, of your assets. And then secondly, to the extent that you don't have the ability at some particular time to handle some of that, that the person who is controlled is the person that you want to have control. And that to the extent that that control should be limited somehow, it is limited. So that's why we're going to talk about powers of attorney, we're going to talk about healthcare proxies, about some issues related to healthcare proxies like DNRs. We're going to talk about, a little bit about trust in the end as an alternative to some of those vehicles. So first of all, um, one of the reasons why you really want to think about a, uh, a power of attorney uh, or a healthcare proxy or both is the alternative. That's the alternative. Uh, if you are uh, incapacitated, if you have control of some assets because you have a bank account or a house or whatever, uh, and you're no, no longer able to handle those things, and so some of your family members come to me and say, oh geez, you know, I had a stroke, Dad has got real problems, we need to deal with these issues. Um, 
they're in the nursing home, we need to be trying to arrange some things, what do we do? Uh, the answer is, uh, in the absence of anything like a power of attorney or a health care proxy, you go through guardianship. Um, what is that? Uh, guardianship is the process through which a court, a probate court, uh, determines that you're crazy, or their official term, mentally ill, that you are mentally ill, uh, and then, and therefore, appoint someone to take care of your, of, your in, of your individual issues and of your assets for you. What are the problems with, with a guardian? Is that, um, first of all, everybody thinks you're crazy. Uh, you, you, you need, in order to get a guardianship, you actually have to bring in, under current rules, a medical certificate to the probate court where a doctor declares that you are mentally ill. That's the words they have to use, mentally ill. Second, the world gets to find out about that because there's typically a publication of this in the paper notifying the world that a petition has been filed basically asking for a guardianship for you. Um, that's the first problem. The second thing is it takes a long time. Uh, a lot of times these issues came up. Uh, I see Donna Long in the back. Hello, Donna. Happy New Year. Um, I, um, a lot of these issues come up because people call and say, we have an emergency. Ma's in the nursing home. Dad had a stroke. We can't pay the bills. What do we do? And, and the answer is, well, you go through this process. It, if, if there's a true emergency that you can show to the judge, maybe it'll only take a couple of weeks to get the temporary guardianship approved, which only lasts for no more than 90 days. And then to get the permanent guardianship approved probably takes about two months, and that's if it's not contested. That's if none of the relatives are fighting about this stuff. Next. Oh, by the way, remember Brenda Costa? Still with us. Brenda's now an employee of Myrick O'Connell. So if you're talking, you're still talking to the kind of the two of us whenever you're whenever you're uh, talking. Um, the other reasons, it costs a ton of money. Um, every time that one of us has to go to the to probate court in order to get one of these things approved, you're paying for us to go there. You're paying for us to drive to it, you're paying us to wait, and you're paying us to get the decision. Now, I know in an earlier presentation I had talked about um, the kind of the magic five minutes rule. The, the question, the reason why some of these attorney's fees get really high when you're paying for probate stuff, even if it's all uncontested, it is, suppose that you've got, a, you've got an issue and it's in Middlesex County. Uh, and so I have to go get the issue taken care of because I have to go to court and see if the temporary guardian, the court will approve the temporary guardian. We'll assume that there was a petition by one of the relatives that nobody was contesting. We got the certificate from the doctor saying you're crazy and now I just have to get the guardianship. That's only going to take me five minutes. The question is, which five minutes is it going to take me? because this matter, like all uncontested matters in Middlesex Probate Court, gets heard with, once a day, all uncontested matters get heard in one courtroom. Some days there could be 50, 60, 70 matters that are uncontested and they're gonna get considered that day. And all of the lawyers have to show up when the session begins between 8.30 and 9. But as to when you get heard, well, the judge decides when you get heard. So, if you're the lucky one and your matter gets heard at 9 o'clock, then I will charge you for driving into Middlesex County, having been heard for five minutes and driving back. If it gets heard at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, because I'm on the bottom of that list, then I charge you for driving in, waiting eight hours, and then driving back. Now, the reason why I have to charge you for that is I can't do anything during those eight hours. There is actually a court rule that says that I am supposed to be in court paying attention to those other 59 cases. I can't read the paper. I can't read. I, I am supposed to be paying attention to this, which means that, you're, that the legal bill, every time people go to court, can be really huge. So it costs a ton of money in, in, uh, in uh, legal fees. Also in bond costs, the person who gets appointed as the guardian typically has to file, or always has to file a bond. That's a promise that as guardian, they're not going to abuse their uh, authority and steal all the money. Uh, if, if there are more than, if the, if the assets are more than $100,000, typically in Middlesex, the court will require that that bond be guaranteed by an insurance company, and the insurance company is going to charge for that. They will most likely charge several thousand dollars for that bond annually. And then, once all of that's done, there's an annual reporting requirement. Once there's a guardian on board, the guardian has a responsibility every year 
to file a, an accounting with the court saying what happened financially during that year. And the court often will appoint a GAL, a special lawyer, a guardian ad litem, to review that accounting to make sure that everything is okay. And of course, you're going to get charged for that. So there, there are all these bills. And finally, and most importantly, guardianships, like many court procedures, often bring out the worst in people. Um, the most contentious cases that I have ever had in my life are, are probate cases. I had this, this case, it was a guardianship case. Uh, there were um, eight kids. Uh, There's a little old lady who was in a nursing home actually right now in um, Westboro. And there was the older kids, and there was like the younger kids. And there was obviously some issues in this family. I mean, there was some alcohol, there were some other issues. And these kids did not get along. So, you know, I represented the young team, and another lawyer represented the old team. And we fought and fought and fought and fought, right? And finally, over who should be the guardian, right? And finally, the judge gave up and named a third party as the guardian. So that, so that that family got to spend all of the money on both of the legal teams to fight, and then the money that they paid the lawyer who got appointed as the non-partisan third party to be the guardian after that. And it just brought out, I mean, this trial was terrible and everybody was yelling. This is not what you want for your family. So there are a lot of reasons why you don't want to go through guardianship. 